Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time we're going to go overseas now to the new drone attack on Moscow. A loud explosion rocking Moscow overnight. The moment of impact captured in this video circulating online, causing a large fire. And sources confirming to ABC News a Ukrainian-made explosive drone like this one was used in this latest attack on the Russian capital. A, a prominent exhibition center badly damaged less than three miles from the Kremlin. No casualties reported. Russian officials saying they shot the drone down but none of the videos support that claim. Earlier, a top Ukrainian official telling me people in Russia, quote, deserve war back home. Also panic this morning in Moscow, thousands of people evacuated from buildings amid fears of another attack. Well, for the first time, the U.S. is officially allowing Ukraine to have F-16 fighter jets, but Ukrainian officials say they won't be ready until next year. Significant developments here. U.S. officials have told CBS News that Ukraine is massing some of the units trained and equipped by NATO for an attempt to punch through Russian defense lines north of Chokma. Ukrainian soldiers have been looking for a gap for weeks now. So finally, a breakthrough, according to a U.S. official. Ukrainian forces have made it through a Russian minefield north of Tokmak. But advancing on Melitopol is a daunting task. So that U.S. decision to ensure the speedy transfer of F-16 fighter jets from Denmark and the Netherlands will be good news for this country. A new think tank report provided first to NBC News concludes that the ballistic missile launched by the regime on July 12th was likely the product of technical cooperation with Russia. The new missile is a significant advancement for North Korea and significant escalation in the country's threat capability. What do we know about the capabilities of these missiles? Well, it's it's very alarming report, and this is from a new study from Beyond Parallel at CSIS, a think tank here, and Victor Cha, who is a contributor to NBC. And it was first reported by us that this new North Korean missile, tested in July, July 12th, is nearly identical, Ellison, in appearance and in trajectory data to a Russian missile that can penetrate U.S. missile defenses and carry multiple warheads across the Pacific and to the continental United States, in fact, as far as right here in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. So it is a significant advance. It's also being reported as a, a real trouble spot by South Korean intelligence tonight and confirmed by U.S. officials. Assuming this was, in fact, the product of Russian cooperation, which the evidence you just laid out there is incredibly notable, what would that suggest about the relationship between North Korea and Russia right now? Well, it's been close for quite a while, but this test shows a, a lot of new evidence. First of all, Russia's defense minister, Sergei Shogu, met in Pyongyang with Kim Jong-un just two weeks later after the test on July 25th. And this was to further cement their ties, and notably he came on the 70th anniversary of the armistice, so that's the founding of their nation. Then Russia was already helping North Korea with energy and food, which they need desperately. North Korea has been providing Russia with weapons to rearm it for Ukraine. So all of this is troubling. After that, Kim Jong-un came out with a statement of partnership with Vladimir Putin. So it is a much closer connection. And all of this in violation of U.N. sanctions. 
And this will all be part of tomorrow's big Camp David summit, the first of its kind, when President Biden is for the first time hosting the leaders of South Korea and Japan to discuss the growing threats in the region, which certainly include North Korea, but of course also what to do about China. Three like-minded leaders forging closer ties as they see growing threats common to them all. U.S. President Joe Biden wants to build on the marked improvement in relations between Japan and South Korea. All three countries have been brought closer by the threat of North Korea's continued weapons development. In order to fundamentally block North Korea's nuclear and missile threats, the Republic of Korea, the United States and Japan must closely cooperate on reconnaissance assets and share data in real time. The three have taken part in joint military drills and embarked on intelligence sharing, raising alarms in North Korea's only significant ally. China is watching this trilateral meeting intensely, suspecting the US and its Northeast Asian allies of trying to restrain its growing power at a time when Beijing's friendship is being eagerly sought by Moscow as it looks for any support in its continuing war in Ukraine. This was Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu on a recent visit to North Korea, which is allegedly supplying Russia with munitions, followed by the 70th anniversary celebration of the ending of the Korean War, also attended by a high-profile delegation from China. Of course, it also goes in the other direction. You know, the more that, that Beijing, Moscow, and, and Pyongyang cooperate with each other, the more that Seoul, Washington, and Tokyo are going to cooperate with each other as well. The shifting power blocks of the Asia-Pacific as neighbors seek security and advantage amid increasing insecurity. The agenda is adopted. For the first time in more than five years, the United Nations Security Council took up the issue of human rights abuses in North Korea. The meeting was requested by the United States, Japan and Albania, accusing Pyongyang of overspending on its nuclear program while millions of people go hungry and are denied basic goods. In the DPRK's repressive political climate allows the government to divert resources to weapons development at the expense of the welfare of the people in the DPRK who suffer from severe economic hardship and malnutrition. Not a single country defended the actions of the DPRK, whose ambassador declined to take part in the meeting. But there was debate about whether or not the Security Council, whose mandate is international peace and security, was the appropriate place to talk about human rights. North Korea continues to develop nuclear weapons and missiles in violation of council resolutions, and China argued that calling the meeting would only escalate tensions, while Russia accused the U.S. of distracting attention from its own provocative acts. We all know the USA, Japan and Korea, as part of the so-called deterrence policy, are continuing military exercises in the region. More than 50 nations sided with the United States in condemning North Korea's alleged abuses, saying its actions constitute a threat to international peace and security, saying its actions constitute a threat to international peace and security. First Thessalonians 5.3, while people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, 
cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100 pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. Southern California is bracing for something very rare in that region, the impact of a now major hurricane. Hillary is churning off the Mexico's western coast, and it's heading up north. This is really historic. It's been, since 1939, a tropical storm has made landfall uh, in Southern California. You can see a very well-defined eye right here, 400 miles south of Cabo San Lucas, 145-mile-per-hour winds, moving northwest at 13. This thing has already doubled what we go as far as the the depth definition for rapid intensification. So by Sunday evening, uh, late evening, we're looking at landfall somewhere in the Southern California area as a tropical storm. But because this thing has rapidly intensified so strongly, it may make it as a hurricane. We will have to wait and see. But no matter what happens, whether it's a hurricane, tropical storm, or remnants, we've got 24 million people impacted by flash flood watches and warnings right now all the way into parts of the Southwest. And we've got a high flood, uh, flood flash flood risk from San Diego to Las Vegas. Rainfall rates of up to three inches per hour. We're talking about rainfall amounts in the mountains of Southern California up to 10 inches, five to eight locally, and we may see isolated tornadoes as well as this thing comes inland. So we're going to be watching this very closely over the next 48 hours. A wildfire out of control burning throughout the night on the Spanish island of Tenerife. Around 250 firefighters have been tasked with tackling the blaze, which stretches over 30 kilometers and has burned thousands of acres of land. The fire started on Tuesday night and is located in a mountainous area to the north of the island, difficult for emergency services to access. Nearly 8,000 residents have had to be either evacuated from their homes or ordered to stay indoors. It really is a nightmarish fire, and people's safety must come first. I feel bad. I am sick, and right now I have to get my clothes, medicine, and get out of here. Spanish authorities have said that their main goal is to contain the blaze and prevent it from reaching more populated areas. Tenerife, the largest of the Canary Islands, is one of Spain's tourist hotspots. On Thursday, the island's tourism office released a statement stressing that the main tourist areas of the island are away from the fire, with Tenerife's capital, Santa Cruz, 20 kilometers from the flames. Temperatures in the Canary Islands peaked at more than 40 degrees Celsius in recent days, temperatures that are expected to rise once more this weekend. The fire could become Spain's worst blaze so far this summer, as the country suffers another year of severe drought. We turn now to the latest on Maui. This morning, new video of Lahaina up in flames as two captains rushed in to help with water rescues. While the official cause of the disaster has yet to be determined, Hawaii's Governor Josh Green ordering the Attorney General to review critical decision-making policies and the actions taken. Official reports now confirming that at least 58% of the affected area has been surveyed. The death toll at least 111. The number of search dogs doubling from 20 to 40 to help speed up the daunting recovery effort. What makes this search so much different from other disasters? This fire was moving like a freight train. People could not drive fast enough to outrun it, much less run fast enough. They sought shelter anywhere they could. And day after day, incredible stories surfacing from the ashes. I've lost my son, so I start fighting the fire, and I think my son's dead, so I'm like crying and fighting the fire at the same time. Randy Cordemanch telling us he saved two apartment complexes while standing on two broken feet. I knew that my feet were in bad shape, but I didn't have time to worry about myself. I go, I can do something. I can help these people. I can put out these fires. I know I can. Then, after waiting three long days, reunited at last. I hear, Dad! I look over, Christian! He comes running to me, we just gave each other a big hug. And when I saw him and knew, found out that he was alive, it was like, thank you, Jesus, I love you so much. 
people line up for flights out of Yellowknife as the town's entire population of 20,000 flee raging wildfires. Residents of the town in Canada's Northwest Territories have been beset by the country's worst ever forest fires. Few have any hesitation about leaving while they can. You see all this? I, I honestly want to get out of here. It's quite scary um, because with the smoke, of course, it's actually lightened up a little bit, but the smoke was very, very thick this morning. The fires have been so intense as to turn the sky deep red. Many people are feeling overwhelmed by the images that we see from the Northwest Territories, and we recognize the impact that it takes. Our hearts go out to everyone. These satellite images show the staggering extent of the fires. The federal government has mobilised the army to help battle the flames. Authorities in the western province of British Columbia expect things to only get worse. This weather event has the potential to be the most challenging 24 to 48 hours of the summer from a fire perspective. We are expecting significant growth and we are expecting our resources to be challenged from north to south in the province over the next 48 hours. More than 13 million hectares of Canadian forest have gone up in flames this year, more than twice the previous record, driven by extreme temperatures and drought. As we look at the news, there is no doubt we are in the birth pains Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 8. We see many of God's remedial judgments manifesting, as if God is warning us of things to come and calling on people to repent. We see war and rumors of wars, famine and pestilence resulting in the deaths of thousands around the world. We are seeing earthquakes, extreme heat, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, hailstorms and hurricanes, all at record levels of frequency and intensity, just like Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The judgments God will use to punish mankind with during the seven year tribulation will be much worse than any of us can imagine. Still, this is God's grace and mercy, proving to everyone that these judgments come from him and he is still offering forgiveness of sins through his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. Occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready!
Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.